In this video, I'm gonna break down the golf swing sequence into six different steps so you can assess your swing and figure out which steps you need to work on to perfect the correct technique for each of the different swing steps. Now, when you can get all six swing steps perfected, it'll flow together nicely and you're gonna have a nice looking golf swing. So if you're currently struggling with your golf swing and you're wondering what's going wrong in the golf swing, watch this video all the way to the end and keep an eye on each of the different six aspects of the swing to figure out which areas might be breaking down in your swing. And these could be where you find faults and errors that you could fix by learning the proper technique for each of those steps. All right, so to get started talking about the swing sequence, let's talk about step number one, and that is the address position. So the address just means when we set up to the golf ball before we actually start the swing. So we're addressing the golf ball. So for the address, this position is where we're gonna focus on a few different things. We're gonna worry about how we stand relative to the golf ball as far as how far away we're standing. So we wanna make sure that our hands are not having to reach way too far out, but we also don't wanna be standing too close to the golf ball where our hands are really smashed in against our body here and we can't really get our arms to rotate around our body properly. So we wanna find that comfortable distance that we can stand away from the golf ball. Typically, you want your butt of your club here to be about one hand length away. So if I put my hand here, you can see I've got about one hand of space between the butt and my belt buckle. So once we take our address here, then the next thing we need to worry about is ball position and stance width. So this is where the ball is relative to our stance here. So right now it's in the middle of my stance. And then we wanna talk about stance width, how far apart our feet are. So right now my feet are shoulder width. I can widen them a little bit more if I'm hitting a driver or a wood. So the address overall is getting properly set up to the golf ball. So I've set up here, I've got my address all figured out. I've got my spine tilt, I've got my knees slightly bent, I've got my weight distributed on my feet, we've got ball position, so all these different things which we'll cover in other videos on how to properly address the golf ball. But once we've got that address figured out and perfected, now we're ready for the takeaway. So with the takeaway, this is the part where the golf club actually moves away from the golf ball. So in this case here, I've set the club behind the ball, and now to start the takeaway, we're just gonna pick the club up and start to move it back behind us, and we're gonna do it real slow until we get to about right here. So this is the first checkpoint. When this club shaft is sitting parallel to our target line. So if I grab an alignment stick here and we put it down on the ground here. So this just shows our target of where we're aiming our golf, our golf ball. So if we're aiming at a flag stick or if we're aiming at the fairway. So as we take this golf club back on the backswing and the takeaway, Right about here, this golf shaft is now sitting about parallel to that target line. So this is the very first checkpoint. So when we get to this checkpoint, I wanna check my club face on my golf iron here, and I wanna make sure that that club face is kinda of pointing straight. If we notice that the club face, which the club face itself is this side of the golf club. So the club face is what makes contact with the ball. It's what has these grooves kind of chiseled into the face of the club. So this club face is what's actually making contact with the ball. So we wanna focus on whether the club face is closed, whether that club face is open, or whether that club face is pretty straight and neutral, which we call square. So as we set the club behind the ball, the club face starts out square or neutral to that ball, meaning right now it's perfectly straight. If it hits that ball right now, that ball would go straight. So as we take that club back on the takeaway, a lot of beginners will kind of rotate that club face open to now where those grooves and the face of the club are gonna be pointing upwards kind of towards the sky. The other fault some beginners make is when they take it away, they kind of rotate it shut. So now as we get back here to this checkpoint, you can see the face of the club's kind of angled down. Those grooves are gonna be pointing down towards the ground if we drew arrows out of the club face. So we want that club face to be pretty neutral and stay pretty straight and pretty square. So when I get back here on the takeaway to the point where my club shaft is pretty much laying you know, horizontal with the ground there, then we can look at the head of the club and see it kind of sticking straight up more vertical in the sky. Now it's not a bad thing if we turn back and that club face is slightly closed. 
For most people, that's a good thing because most people are playing with a slice. And when they play with a slice, that means they're hitting the golf ball with an open club face. And when you hit with an open club face, it creates that slice spin that makes the golf ball spin from the left to the right when it's flying through the air. So taking that club back slightly shut might be one of the first fixes that helps you start to reduce your slice or get rid of a slice. Making sure when you get to this point in the takeaway, that club face is either square or slightly closed. So start off just doing simple practice drills. You don't even need a golf ball. You can just stand here, set your club on the ground, take your setup, and just work on 50 reps, 100 reps doing this multiple times. Just take the club back, pause, check it, see where it's at. If you notice it's open, then that means you're doing something with your wrists on the way back. So try to keep your hands more still on the takeaway so you're not rotating that club face open on the way back. So just continue to just set up, take the club back, check it, make sure it's straight, bring it back down, try to keep it straight on the way back down as well. That's also gonna help you prepare when you come down on the downswing. We wanna keep that club face square, not opening or shutting it. So just keep doing this drill, checking yourself here. This is step two, the takeaway, where we're just working on taking that club back, trying to get it on the right line, on the right plane, and also keeping that face square during the takeaway move. Now, another aspect of the takeaway to consider is the path that we take that club back. So initially, when I first start taking the club back, I'm taking it back pretty straight, about the first foot. So if I put a golf ball directly straight behind my golf ball that I'm setting up to, I wanna be able to move that club back about the first foot, dead straight to where I bump into this next golf ball. So I've hit that golf ball. So I, that tells me I've taken the club back perfectly straight on the way back. Now, once we've taken that club back the first foot, you're gonna notice our upper torso here is starting to turn, it's starting to rotate. Our shoulders are starting to rotate backwards towards the camera. So that's the point where that club is now gonna start arcing kind of to the inside. So again, we wanna keep our Y that we set up here with. So if you think about the club being the bottom point of a Y, and then as we grab onto it with our arms, our arms form the other shape that goes with the letter Y. So we're kind of forming a Y here. And as we're doing that takeaway, we wanna keep that Y intact for the first part of the takeaway. Now, once we start to get to the point where we're turning, then the club's gonna start to go back kind of on an arc. So once we get it to this point here, that's what we'll call nine o'clock. So imagine that I was facing you right now on camera and we were to draw a clock. So if this was six o'clock on the ground, well, when I get this club back here to the point that it's parallel to the ground, that would be nine o'clock on the clock. And then as we swing back here, we're at six o'clock. And then as we swing back forward, now we're at three o'clock. So think about a couple of different things. Start that club back on a straight line for the first foot or so. Then your shoulders should start rotating to where that club starts rotating on an arc because it's still intact, that Y shape you're making with it. Now, as we get it back to the point that the club shaft is parallel to the ground, then we're gonna be at nine o'clock and we wanna check that club face and see that it's still pointing straight and square to our target line or it's slightly shut so that we don't have a slice spin on the golf ball when we hit it. So that is step two called the takeaway. Now step three is gonna be the backswing in general. So the backswing is where we're getting the club on the right plane so that when we come down, we can swing down also on the right plane and hit the golf ball with a lot of speed, with a lot of power and also on the right path to get the ball to do what we want. If we're trying to hit it right, if we're trying to hit it left, the swing path is gonna kind of dictate that. So the backswing is just about getting the club back and then up to the top where the top of the backswing is where we pause and we have a transition. So this will be step number four we're gonna talk about shortly. So to get to the proper top of the backswing position, we wanna have a good backswing. So tempo is one of the first things we wanna think about with the backswing. When we take that club back, we don't wanna take it back way too fast. If we take it way too fast, we get out of control. Instead, you'll notice golfers set up and they just slowly kind of take that club back. And you could honestly do a pretty slow backswing if you wanted to, because what really matters is when we get all the way to the top, we have that brief pause where we kind of slow down and stop the club for a second, and then we whip it down through impact. 
So it's the downswing that we're generating all that speed anyways. So it really doesn't matter how fast or how slow you do your backswing because at some point you're gonna stop your backswing at the top and then you're gonna start it up again and you're gonna swing it down fast to the ball. So in that regard, you're better off starting off with maybe a slower tempo backswing so you can keep that club more in control. But we don't wanna to get too slow that it gets hard to control as well because when things start getting too slow, you can start moving things around on accident. You kinda of wanna find that comfortable tempo where you can keep that club going back on the same plane the entire time. So when we talk about swing plane on the backswing, this has to do with how steep of a backswing we take. So some golfers think that you just pick the club straight up as you take it back and then you come straight back down. But what that does is it causes you almost to come over the top and kind of swing from the outside in and that's gonna cause that kind of nasty pulled shot to the left that then slices back to the right. Instead, we wanna think of the golf swing as more circular, more arcing around our body. So as I take this club back, I'm kind of arcing it on an arc around my body instead of picking that club straight up into the sky. So if we look at it from the down the line view here, again, we're gonna take that club back kind of on an arc, and as we come down on the downswing, we're just bringing it back down on that arc again. So if you have a really steep swing plane, that means you're picking the club up more vertically into the air. If you have a more shallow or less steep swing plane, that means you're wrapping that club around your body in a more circular arcing motion. So you don't wanna be too drastic either way. You don't wanna pick that club up way too steep, and we don't wanna bring that club around our body way too shallow. We wanna find kind of that middle kind of angle swing plane that we can get that club back to and then bring it back to that golf ball. So one simple drill for this, again, just work on the backswing, the takeaway, and, and stop when you get to the top of the backswing and then start back over again from the ground up. So I just set up here to my ball, take that club back, kind of watching it to make sure I'm keeping it on the right swing plane. So we kind of have that same angle in our club the whole time up and then the whole time back down so we can stay on the same plane. What some golfers do is they'll take it up on one swing plane and then they'll drop the club angle and then they'll bring it down at a completely different swing plane. And that's gonna cause you more problems in your swing because you're just doing more work trying to reset things. Your swing's getting out of whack. You're trying to compensate for things. So it's better to try to bring that club back on the same swing plane and bring it back down to the ball on that same swing plane. So it's less adjusting, less trying to figure things out, less timing issues, swing sequencing issues. There's a lot of things that can go wrong in the swing when you start moving that club around in the backswing, getting it all out of whack. All right, so to kind of break things down here in a quick summary, we address the golf ball, we take it back a few feet on the takeaway, then it starts to go on an arc. This arc is known as the swing plane, and then we get to the top of the backswing, finally up here where our hands are higher up near our chin. So what we're gonna talk about now is step four, top of the backswing. So this is one of the first things you can work on if you are struggling with hitting with control. A lot of beginners will take the club too far back in the top of the backswing. So in this case, when you turn back, you're gonna notice that my hands kind of stop about chin height, maybe about ear height on my head here. And then the club shaft is kind of angled pointing towards the sky still. Now most golfers will dip that club down to where it's angling down towards the ground. So in this case, if I was doing that, I would be dipping the club behind me here where it's now pointing down at the ground. All right, so we don't want that club to start dipping past parallel. So what they call parallel is if you can imagine behind me, there's a straight parallel line here that's just parallel to the ground. So the ground's running this way and then we've got this line here up above my shoulders and that would be a parallel line. So when I take that club back, you can see here, I've got that club shaft about parallel to the ground right now. So when you're dipping past parallel, that means you're dipping that club at an angle to where it's pointing down at the ground. So again, with my swings, I take a shorter backswing or I get to the full backswing where I stop at parallel. I try not to go past parallel. So in this case, I'll take my irons back to about here. And then on my drives, I typically take it about full to where the club shaft is parallel. So one of the first things you can do is judge your swing on camera, set up a camera, film yourself swinging, doing the takeaway, 
and then see where you are when you get to the top of your backswing. So take a full swing with your driver, but pause the video when you get to the top of the backswing, and then you can check out where your club position is relative to the ground. Is it parallel? Is it dipping down or are you angling it up more towards the sky? So by doing this, you can start to fix some control issues and find out maybe you're over swinging in your backswing, you're taking that backswing too far and you can start shortening up that backswing and that's gonna give you more control over the golf ball. Now, one other tip to talk about top of the backswing, this is the moment where we pause our backswing and then it becomes a transition period where we start transitioning to the downswing. So in this case, I'm gonna set up to the ball we turn back, we get to the top of the backswing, and we don't pause for very long. It's literally a brief second, maybe a tenth of a second, half a second, depending on how long you do it. But it's a very brief pause, and then we start those hands back down to the golf ball. So again, we turn back, and then we come back down to the golf ball. So it's very brief, but we call this the transition. This is the phase where we start to get our lower body involved, get our hips moving, get that body weight shifted forward. So if I set up here to my golf ball, and we were to have a straight line kind of running down my sternum here to the ground, this is kind of our anchor point, this center point here. So as we turn back, we're just turning back around that center point. You're not gonna see me shifting my weight sideways. So a lot of beginners start off kind of moving their body weight backwards away from this center line. So if I had a center line here, I wouldn't be bumping backwards with my body, getting my body weight behind the golf ball because that's just gonna make me have to move all that weight back forward by the time I get to that golf ball. So that's a lot of extra work. A lot of things can go wrong during that time frame. So instead, we try to stay pretty centered around our center line here. So you're gonna notice that instead, I pretty much am just turning my body, but keeping it pretty much on that center line. So I'm just rotating my upper body to the point that my shoulders are 90 degrees relative to my target line here. So by rotating our body, that's gonna allow us to build some torque here. So our lower body, our hips start to rotate a little bit. You can notice that these hips here are rotating a little bit back to where they're now pointing a little bit backwards of the ball, but I'm also rotating my upper body a lot more. So this is creating kind of a twisting, torquing effect here between my lower body and my upper body. So as I start to start the downswing, we have all that torque kind of we've built up to where we're able to fire down at the golf ball fast. So it's like unwinding a spring. If you twist something and then you let it go and it unwinds real fast. That's kind of the effect here with our body. Our lower body staying more stable, our upper body's twisting, and now we're ready to fire down into that golf shot. So we do that by starting with the hips, the lower body, and we start to get that body weight forward of the center line. So if you think of our center line here, when we hit the downswing, we want our body to get back forward of that center line. That way we can hit the golf ball with a more angled club shaft coming down to the ball. And this is gonna strike it with pure contact and moving our body weight in that transition. Transitioning our body weight forward is gonna help us get into that final follow through position where most of our body is turned at our target and we've got most of our weight forward of the center line. So that power, that weight behind the golf ball, transitioning it forward is what gives us power into that golf ball as well. So again, that transition period in step four, top of the backswing, that's all about getting our body weight started forward. So we're gonna turn back, get to the top, get that club shaft parallel, and then the first move is gonna be bumping our legs kind of left to get that weight started. So I'm gonna turn back, and then the first thing I did was fired those hips at the golf ball, got that weight going forward, and that's gonna help you in that transition phase. So think of the transition as when you're pausing top of the backswing, and then you're starting to move your lower body, starting to fire those hips, starting to fire that torso, and then you're dropping your arms down in. So that's where we're gonna move on to step number five, the downswing. So again, we'll turn back, get to the top of our backswing. So step five, this is where we're starting the downswing. We've already talked briefly about how we're gonna start it by firing those hips, getting those legs moving, getting that upper body starting to fire forward and at the same time we're letting our arms drop back down bringing the club back down to the golf ball so we'll set back up here and show you kind of what it looks like full speed and then we'll try to slow things down again so we'll turn back and then fire 
So you're gonna notice it all kind of happens at once. So the downswing is where a lot of things can go wrong. This is where a lot of golfers can struggle and probably where you're gonna find that you can fix a few things. So we wanna first get our hips firing, but we don't wanna get it too out of sync with our upper body. When our lower body gets too far ahead of our upper body, that's where our, our arms kind of fall way too far behind and we end up pushing golf shots to the right. If our upper body unwinds too fast before we really drive much with our lower body, that's gonna cause this upper body to really twist towards the left and that's gonna get pulled shots over to the left. So when we have timing where our upper and lower bodies are working together, turning back to the ball in sync, that's gonna help us hit straighter golf shots. So that could be something if you're pulling a lot of golf shots right now, you might have a timing issue where your upper body is unwinding quicker than your lower body. You're not using your lower body fast enough or you're not using it enough in general. And if you're pushing shots to the right, maybe you're firing those legs, those hips a lot quicker than your upper body. So your upper body needs to catch up more and get more in sync with the lower body to help you stop pushing shots to the right. Now, another thing on the downswing that we wanna talk about is swing path. So when we're bringing that club down to the golf ball, there's a couple different paths we can take. There's the straight path where the club just kind of comes down. We get it back on plane as it's coming down on plane. It hits that golf ball on a straight path. So to check if you're hitting with a straight path, you could set up a couple tees in the ground. I'm gonna use golf balls for demonstrative purposes, but we would set a couple tees about a club head width apart and then we have our ball in the middle between those two tees. So now that club head is gonna be coming through that hitting zone on a straight path. So it's gotta go straight. So straight all the way through. If we're coming down at an angle from the inside or from the outside, we're gonna hit one of those tees, or in this case, one of those golf balls, and that's gonna indicate we're coming down on a not straight path. So swing path, if you're not hitting on a straight path, you might notice you're pushing shots to the right or you're pulling shots to the left due to the fact that the club path is coming into the ball either from the outside or it's coming from the inside. So if we have a slicing problem, that's probably due to the fact that that club is coming down from the outside. So in this case, when I get to the top and I start to come down, I'm casting that club to the outside and then we're coming across the ball from the outside in, pulling that club across our body back to the inside. And when we pull it across our body back to the inside, that forces that golf ball left. And by hitting that golf ball left, we're not gonna get anywhere but pulled shots. So what we do to compensate for that naturally without realizing it, is we start to hit that golf ball with a more open face. So now we're swinging across outside to inside, hitting that golf ball left, but that open club face starts happening and now that's where that left to right spin happens that slices the golf ball. Now to fix that, we can start adjusting that swing path so that we're coming more from the inside. So to force yourself to do this, you can use a simple head cover so this blocks you from hitting from the outside. So I would just set my head cover down there and then that's gonna force me when I turn back and I start the downswing, I'm gonna have to drop my hands more to the inside and bring that club path inside to get out of the way of this head cover. So I'm gonna be swinging out to the right instead of coming down over the top and then whacking into that club head cover. So that could be a quick fix drill you could try to work on swing path if you have a path coming outside to in. Again, to figure out how your swing path is, you're gonna probably need to set up a barrier and find out if you're hitting the barrier. You could also videotape yourself. You could also check your divots to kind of get an idea of what swing path direction you have. But figuring out whether you need to be more coming from the inside or maybe you're already coming too much from the inside and you need to get that path more straight. So finding out by filming yourself is probably gonna be the most effective way to figure out what's going wrong with your swing path. All right, the other aspect of the downswing we need to talk about besides swing path is face angle. So again, we talked about in the takeaway, making sure we keep that face angle square, not rotating that club face open or shutting it too much closed. And again, this is the same on the downswing. When we bring that club down on the downswing back to that golf ball, we wanna make sure the face here is square when it hits the golf ball, so it's back straight. If that club face is too shut, or it's too open, that's gonna cause that slice spin or that draw spin. So again, with the downswing, we wanna make sure that we're bringing it down, getting the hands and the arms 
to rotate that club face back shut if we have a problem where we're opening it on the backswing. We gotta make sure we're rotating it back shut on the downswing so that we're not leaving it open hitting that slice shot. So consider club face depending on what shot type you're currently hitting. If you know you're hitting these hook shots that go from the right to the left where they hook drastically over to the left side of the rough, you probably have a shut club face and you need to work on opening that club face up a little more so that you're striking the ball more square. If you find that you have one of those big banana bending slices, that's probably because you're hitting with too much of an open club face relative to your swing path. So if your swing path is going dead straight, but your club face is open, it's gonna start the ball straight, but then it's gonna start slicing. All right, and then step number six is the follow through. This is also important because if we don't follow through correctly, if we hold our hands off, so we come down, we hit the golf ball, and if we hold those hands off, that keeps that club face more open. That can also cause you to have more of a slice shot or to give up a little bit of distance. So making sure that when we're coming through the hitting zone, we're following through, getting that weight transfer finalized and forward. So there's a few different aspects there that can really impact our swing as far as how hard, how far we're hitting it, and also the face angle. So let's talk a little bit down the line view here first. So we talked about the takeaway earlier. We talked about taking the club back to nine o'clock, checking our face to make sure it's square. Now when we come through the hitting zone and we hit that golf ball and we follow through, now we get to three o'clock. So now we wanna check that club face again. So let me go ahead and do a face on view this time. So we take the club back, we come down, we hit that golf ball out of the way, we finish, and now that club gets to three o'clock. So that club shaft back to a parallel position with the ground. We wanna make sure that club face is slightly closed or square at that position. And that's gonna tell us that we came through and rotated that club face properly into that follow through position. So if you're coming through and you're not rotating your arms over in the follow through, if you're holding off, you're gonna notice your arms kind of disconnect. So in this case, if I'm holding off the shot, you can see how my arms look here. You can see how my shaft is angled, my club head's pointing up to the sky, meaning it's wide open. Now instead, what we wanna do is we wanna try to rotate that club face more shut at impact. And to do that, you think about your forearm here kind of rotating over. So just practice holding your arm out here like this to where your palm's up at the sky and just rotate it over until your palm's facing the ground. Now put your hand on the club and kind of imagine that same thing as we're coming through. We're kind of rotating that arm over to the point that it's shutting that face closed to now that club face being pointed down. Now we don't wanna do that so drastically that we're creating a big hook on the golf ball. We don't wanna hit a big hook by shutting that face too drastically. We also don't wanna to get too handsy where we're flipping our hands. Instead, we wanna think about kind of rotating the arms, the forearms over to make sure we get through in that follow through position. So if you watch me just take a normal swing here, I, I, you should be able to see kind of how I kind of roll those arms over each other. And then that gets us here, where then we kind of finish wrapping that club around behind us. And we get our body facing forward. We've got that toe up. We've got the heel pointed out towards behind us. So that's the final follow through position where we've got that body weight forward. We're on good balance. We're not tipping over, falling forward. We're not hanging back where we're losing power and distance because we didn't get our weight forward enough. So if you find yourself swinging on the follow through, hanging back on these feet to where your body's kind of tilted back and you're hanging back, that could be a sign that you're losing potential distance and power. You need to work on better weight transfer, shifting your weight forward, getting more to this upright position where we're facing our target on the follow through. So I know this is a longer video, but those are the different steps to the golf swing that you can talk about addressing at the golf course on the driving range. So you can work one by one on each of them until you figure out how to master them successfully in a sequence that you puts together a nice golf swing. So starting with your address, working on setting up to the golf ball, then go to the golf driving range and we'll start working on takeaway drills until you master the takeaway. Then work on the entire backswing move. Then work on that pause and that transition at the top of the backswing, making sure the club shaft is parallel and not dipping past parallel. 
Then we want to work on the downswing and getting that club back to the ball on the right swing path with the club face back square at impact. And then as we come through the hitting zone, we want to work on the follow through, making sure we're getting our weight and our body rotated and transferred over so that we can finish in a nice follow through position. Thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed today's video, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. Share this channel with a friend who plays golf. Let's get more people into the game learning how to play golf and it'll be more fun for you and your friends if you guys can go out and play better rounds of golf after implementing these different tips in these videos. So I appreciate you being here, giving me some time to watch today's tips and lessons. You can find more about our training programs, our drills, our different practice plans that we have available for golfers to utilize at foygolfacademy.com, which will be linked below in this YouTube video.